Back at it again, this is Gus Smith, so you know what time it is. It's time for the preseason East Texas Top 10 Wide Receivers. So, the 2022 fall season is approaching. It's the summertime. You know, it's about that time to start coming out with lists. It's about that time for Dave Campbell's to come out. So, why not give you the East Texas version of it right here? Here are your Top 10 Receivers going into the 2022 season. Now, there's a couple of notables before we get to the actual list. Uh, there's some guys that have played well in the past before that just came up a little bit short on this list. The first guy we're going to uh, highlight right here is uh, the junior, Braden Manning from Elysian Fields. Now, Braden Manning played absolutely outstanding as a freshman with Ryan Wilkinson. Uh, when Wilkinson was there, he was looked like the next big thing smoking but Elysian Fields didn't replace their quarterback uh with one as good as Wilkerson last year and Manning's uh numbers and tape fell off just a little bit but he is a very talented player and if those guys can get it figured out at their quarterback position they have one of the gyms in East Texas in Braden Manning and so it'll be he's a guy that, that has to you know keep his name on the name so watch this because he's he, he, he has done it before, and he is explosive. Next guy, another guy that's done it before is Aaron Hampton. Uh, Aaron Hampton, uh, as a receiver, is as explosive as any guy in East Texas. Uh, and the thing that keeps him off the top ten is they're replacing their quarterback. He had probably the strongest arm in East Texas thrown it to him last year in D. Lewis. This year, Chase Johnson, uh, he's going to be a sophomore. Don't know what we're going to get at him. Plus, Aaron Hampton might end up playing a little quarterback. When uh, D. Lewis was hurt, Aaron slid over and played a little quarterback last year. So, don't know if he's going to be an all-out wide receiver the whole year. So, that's why he falls outside of the top ten. The next guy, senior, Jeremiah Smith from West Rusk. It's speed, speed, speed. He made the list last year. Um, he's got Andy Mata coming back. And with Mata's big talent itself, he, he's going to have a chance to go for over you know 1,000 yards receiving this year. Don't know how many receivers West Russ has. I don't know what how many are, are returning from last year's team. But Jeremiah Smith is obviously a name to watch there for the wide receiver position. And uh, the next guy, Jaden Horton from Mount Vernon. He had a decent year last year. Went over about 750 yards. Uh, was the number two man to Caden Kaufman. And obviously, you know, he's got the best quarterback probably on these guys coming back. So he'll obviously, you know, the projections have him going probably 1,100, 1,200 yards just based off what Kaufman did last year. Uh, they still have McKenzie McGill, so they'll still be running the ball heavy. But Braden Bennett is back at Mount Vernon. And Jaden Horton ought to be the number one receiver based off last year. Uh, next guy, uh, Junior Jamal Robinson, the uh, little brother of uh, Jacoby Robinson over at Henderson. Uh, Jamal had a couple of like really great games. I, I know he stood out against Spring Hill. He was amazing in that game. It's time to see if he can take that and do it against everybody. You know, he's got one of the best quarterbacks uh, coming back in East Texas. And obviously, it's his brother. Looked for a connection there. Don't be surprised if Jamal is leading the, the East Texas in, in catches and yards by the end of the year. Just because of the, the, the dynamic. Uh, and then lastly, right before we get to the list, Elijah Ward from Russ. Now, Elijah Ward is as fast as anybody on this list. He can make plays. He made a lot of plays last year with Owen McCowan, but now he doesn't have Owen anymore. So what's it going to look like at Russ? Does he have somebody that's going to be able to spin it to him and get him the amount of yards and catches and the chance to make the highlights and plays to be one of the top ten? So here we go, top ten preseason list. At number ten, Colin Lewis from Gladewater. Uh, last year he had about 28 catches, 518 yards, three touchdowns. Also ran the ball 21 times, 169 yards, two touchdowns. Colin Lewis – is uh is one of the best players in East Texas. He you're just not gonna be able to see it from the Gladewater offense. Uh, a lot of option, a lot of running the football. Colin will even play quarterback a little bit this year, probably. So, uh, probably not even justified probably being the number ten guy here on the list. But as a skill and as a football player, and just watching him live in seven on seven, and just watching him throughout the years, he can play. He can go up and get the ball. He's a competitor. He's a gamer. Uh, and he's one of the reasons why Clay Water was around in the third or fourth round last year. I think he's going to be a big reason why, they're, if they're any good this year, it's going to be because of Colin Lewis. So, Colin Lewis is going to get my number 10 spot right here. At number 9, C.J. Gilbert, senior from Dangerfield. Last year, he had 63 catches, 1,100 yards, and 17 touchdowns. He's in a talent pool by itself. 
You know, uh, he's playing guys that, that cannot play with him in a 3A Division two level. And so, uh, you know, last year he had D. Lewis to, you know, get it to him perfectly. Chase Johnson comes back with some experience. I don't know if he's quite the player D was. So it'll be interesting to see, to see you know, the the amount of – uh, production that the quarterback and receiving game has this year, but I know CJ Gilbert is a cheat code on that level. Throw it up high, the kids can't reach it. He goes up and gets it, and so uh, it's real simple. He he can do a lot in this game. He can run after the catch as well. He's not the fastest guy in East Texas, but he can run after the catch as well. Uh, expect a big year from CJ Gilbert from Dangerfield, the senior. And number eight, Jermod McCoy. He's about six one, one hundred seventy five pounds. He wore the number zero. He is explosive. He went off at the end of last year uh, with Josh Green, and I think he is as good as any receiver for the most part in East Texas. He can catch the football. He can run. Let's um, let's get that out there and establish. He can ne- definitely run by you, uh, and he can go up and catch the football. Great range of uh, emotion in his catch. Wide, you know, wide radius, wide catch circumference. I've heard people say. If you throw it in the area, McCoy takes his two hands and go puts them on the on, on the ball and brings it in every time. Um, he's a really good football player, and if White House is going to make a big jump, then they're going to do it because of Josh Green and Gerard McCoy. Uh, at number seven, Tyson Berry, a guy that's made this list two years in a row. As for the next six guys on this list, they're going to be two-time list makers. They made it in 2020 and 2021. So, obviously, I think they're going to make it here in 2022. Tyson Berry is a guy that can run the football. He's really small, 5'6", 160 pounds maybe. But he is, you know, he's mighty mouse. He's that dynamite on the court. I mean, on the court too, he's an explosive point guard. But on the field, he's just explosion, and you just got to find a way to give him the ball. Was it in reverses? Uh, was it in throwing the ball to him deep, throwing it to him short, handing the ball off to him as a running back, putting him in the return game? Tyson Berry will be explosive this year for Chapel Hill, and they've got a lot of – is coming back and a lot of time in the offseason to find out a way to be creative to get these guys the ball. And I think Tyson's going to be one that benefits from it. And number six is his teammate, Deuce McGregor. Uh, he's a little bit bigger than Tyson. Not too much, though. About 5'9", 170 pounds. Uh, had 53 catches, 969 yards and 9 touchdowns. He's a D1 guy and I'm not a recruiting site by any means. Uh, but he is a guy that can play on the next level. He can get loose in the slot uh, and once he catches the ball, he is as dangerous as anybody on the field. To me, his sophomore year was better than his junior year, mainly because of uh, the quarterback play. As he had, uh, damn, what was his name? Cam somebody his uh, sophomore year, and he was a really good quarterback. And then his junior year, Tyler Jones started the year out for Chapel Hill. And then they moved to Brisbane. Brisbane was a freshman and wasn't as great as a passer as those two, but he could really run the football. And that's the great thing about Chapel Hill. They had really had something going there at the end of the year. Nobody was, you know, could tell that anybody was visibly upset by not getting the ball. You see McGregor out there blocking, throwing passes, doing everything he can to help this team win. I think if Brisbane makes the uh, makes the jump in this passing game, Deuce McGregor could be in the top five, top three, top two receivers in East Texas this year. And number five, Montrell Hatton, senior from Carthage. Uh, I've been a fan of uh, of Haddon since I saw him in sophomore year. I think he can flat out play. I think he's as good as anybody uh, as far as high school football goes. He's as good as anybody that you can find. Uh, is the biggest thing is his speed. You know how how fast is he? Can he run away from people on the next level? And and, they, and that's what keeps him from being considered like upper upper echelon as far as an athlete. But as far as receiving goes, hands check, route running check. Uh, catching traffic, check. Being a good football player, check. Montreal Hedden's all of that. Uh, elite red zone target. He's a guy that can catch many of touchdown passes, and he's got a relationship with Connor Cuff. And these two have the best chance to be uh, the best duo at Carthage since uh, Anthony Morgan and Jalen Claiborne. I, I really feel a lot about that. I feel like they, they've got enough experience with each other, and they finally got a quarterback that's big time and a receiver that's big time, and it's going to be a good time. At number four, uh, one of the best football players on this list, Rohan Fluellen, 88 catches, 1,400 yards, 11 touchdowns last year. And um, Rohan is, is good. I don't know. He's a, I don't want to call him a pro because I don't want to say he's going to the NFL. 
and not because I don't know that to be certain, but he's like a pro on the high school level. There, there ain't nothing he ain't seen. There ain't a zone he can't pick apart. There ain't a route he can't run, and there about there's not a ball he can't catch. He is that good. Um, he's gonna have the best receiving numbers from anybody uh, during his tenure. But how much would that be his senior year? You know, they're replacing Brandon Tennyson out there, and Brandon Tennyson to me is um, was the number two player in East Texas last year. The best offensive player um, really took care of the football and really was a good, the biggest component to why Gilman was really good on offense last year. And so now you go from Brandon to Caden Tennyson, and is Caden as good as his brother? If Caden's as good as his brother, then Rohan might be the number one player in East Texas next year. If he's not, then obviously the receiver is going to suffer just a little bit because he doesn't have as good as a quarterback. So that's why he comes up here at number four. But to me, Rohan is special. I mean, he was the number four player on last year's list. So I think he's a really good football player. It'll just be curious to see what his quarterback can do. At number three, uh, this guy has 2-18 and 18 over the last two years. But that means nothing when they talk about an individual player and his, his statistics and his game. Devin McEwen is a diamond in the rough down there in Jacksonville. Uh, whether it's on offense or defense, he is a guy that can play on the next level power five. He is a guy that if he goes to the right place, gets a chance to show his opportunities, he's a guy that could go to the league. Devin McEwen is really, really good. Uh, this offseason, this track season, he really got faster on the track. He can really run now, uh, and he's always been able to run. I mean, not that he can play. I know he's not surrounded by much down there in Jacksonville, but what he has done over the last two years is just put tape on film. And he is a really, really, really good football player. Now, I ain't going to say too much because they were 2-18 over the last two years. So, I don't think he'll get a chance and opportunity to play in playoffs and big-time moments and really leave an idea and impression of tattoo himself in the minds of East Texas fans for his team to play. But, guaranteed is, Devin McEwen is a baller. And if he gets the right place and right opportunity, he'll be a Sunday guy. That's bold, but I'll say it. At number two, Montreal Wade. Montreal Wade is a uh, is a guy. He's a he's an absolute player. Uh, a lot of catches, a lot of production over the last two years, and a lot of highlights. This guy can play. He's good on offense. I think he's even better on defense. Uh, that ball hawking ability is just too much on that side of the ball. But we'll talk about defense when we get there. Offensively. He can run routes, he can catch the ball, he can score touchdowns. And that's just what you see over and over and over and over again. Now, what would they be at quarterback position in Tyler? When Eli Holt was there, Wade looked like he was 1A or 1B as far as the top receiver goes in East Texas. When Eli Holt is not out there on the field, Wade disappeared. Uh, so, you know, that's what is it going to be? Who's going to be the quarterback at Tyler High? They've got some different guys they've auditioned out for it. You know, just watching them in 7-on-7 this year. Uh, will it be enough for Wade to top this list? He's going to need some talent to play with him in order for him to top this list. We've seen him with a quarterback. We've seen him without it. He's a different guy with one than he is without one. And so, and I mean, that's every offense, right? But that's what's going to keep him from being the number one guy is, is does he have someone throwing it to him? Because he does have potential. He does have a chance to be the number one player in East Texas. He's that good. But he's going to need the pieces around him in order to, for that to fall into place. And at number one, the best receiver in East Texas is Jalen Hill. 6'2", 180, 190. Uh, last year he had 50 catches for 1,100 yards and 14 touchdowns. Jalen Hill is, listen, there's seven legitimate superstars at this position. Six of them are competing with each other. And the other one is just a head in the class above everyone else. And, you know, I, I don't want to sound like the homer, but what Hale has accomplished at, at the one of the toughest levels, if not the toughest level, of East Texas football, playing the teams that he's had to play, uh, making the highlights that he's made, and not having a great, great, great quarterback the entire time he's played, um, just shows showcases what Jalen Hale can and could be. Um as far as his recruiting goes, he's down to three. Georgia, Bama, Texas. 
Um, so you don't know where he's going. But he's a he's oh, he's a legitimate a legitimate superstar. Um, he can do it in the short game. He can run routes. He can catch the deep ball. He can catch the uh, the fade ball. He can run the ball. I mean, if he played defense, he would be as good as a safety as he would be as a receiver. Um, the only thing is, is now can he for his own thing? The only thing that Jalen has is can he carry a team? In a sense, is the way that Camden Perry carried the Longview Lobos in 2018 with over 80 something catches and 1,800 yards. Can you have that kind of dominant statistical year? And, you know, will your quarterback be good enough? That's been the question here his entire career. If he gets the improvement out of the quarterback, like I think he will, I think Jalen Hill is not only the best player to play in East Texas. But he damn near could be the best player to ever come from Longview. That's putting a lot on it. But I don't think that's a stretch by any means. But anyway.